Namaste. So today we're going to continue with Sri Aparokshanubhuti and make a very important point, one that was highlighted by Ramana Maharshi any number of times. And so, well, let's get right to it and look at these five verses. Inasmuch as all beings are born of Brahman, the Supreme Atman, they must be understood to be verily Brahman. The Shruti has clearly declared that Brahman alone is the substratum of all varieties of names, forms, and actions. Just as a thing made of gold ever has the nature of gold, so also a being born of Brahman always has the nature of Brahman. Fear is attributed to the ignorant one who rests after making even the slightest distinction between the Jivatman and the Paramatman. When duality appears through ignorance, one sees another. But when everything becomes identified with the Atman, one does not perceive another, even in the least. So all beings are born of Atman. Why? Because a being is a conscious entity, and Brahman is the universal consciousness, both in its inactive form and its active form, both without qualities and with qualities, both Nirguna and Saguna Brahman. And really, there is not two Brahmans. <laughs> There's only one. But because of Maya, there appears to be this creation based on duality. This is the most subtle point to try to understand. When you have a cause, the qualities of that cause inhere in the effect, isn't it? And in the present case regarding beings, for example, humans are born from humans, cats are born from cats, and so on. So each is born from the parents of its own kind. And in the same way, all beings are conscious Therefore, they must be born from the all-consciousness, the Atman or Brahman. There is no other source. Because consciousness, remember, is not a property of matter, can never be. So consciousness doesn't come from any combination of material elements. Consciousness is absolute. It exists a priori, in other words, without cause. And it cannot be divided. It cannot be transformed. It is not subject to various activities and so on. This is non-duality. So when that non-duality appears to become many, well, that's all it is. It's an appearance. So although the beings are apparently born from Brahman, actually, there is only Brahman. Therefore, everything, not only beings, <laughs> but even so-called inanimate objects, are actually Brahman. And the proof of this is, once again, when we go to sleep at night, all this variety disappears. We find ourselves in a dream world. And there's another type of variety. But then we go into deep sleep, and even that goes away. And there's nothing. Well, there's one thing. Consciousness. Whether or not that consciousness has an object, well, that's another story. If there's no object, then we experience what we call sushupti, or deep sleep. But as soon as there's an object, then we have consciousness, and there appears to be duality. 
but that duality isn't real. And the evidence that it's not real is that it comes and goes. Only consciousness remains. So all these beings are actually Brahman, the self, Atman. So that means there really is no other being. Uh, we're here, Brahman, all alone. <laughs> but since Brahman is Satchit Ananda, there's no problem with that. People go searching after relationships with others only because they feel incomplete. And that's because they're identified with the body and mind. Because if one thinks, aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman, then I am Satchit Ananda, I am complete, I am whole, I am Purnam. Aum Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachate. Huh? So because Brahman is complete and whole, everything that emanates from Brahman also has the same qualities. As the Hermetic saying goes, the axiom, as above, so below. Because Brahman is complete and whole, all the beings and other things emanating from Brahman are also complete wholes. The material world, the universe, the planet, all these different beings, they're all self-sufficient, complete wholes. And the only difference is they're temporary. So then Brahman is the substratum of everything that we experience. And even if it's not the substratum in terms of creation, it's the substratum in terms of consciousness, experience. Everything that we experience is because of consciousness. Without consciousness, there wouldn't be any experience. There wouldn't be any being either. So the whole theory of the scientist blows up when we look at our daily experience in life. That we are conscious, and because we are born from Brahman, that quality of consciousness, eternality, and bliss inheres in us and cannot be separated from us at any point. Even if the body drops, which it will, then we go on and we can take another body or whatever we want. You see, this is it. We already have complete freedom. We already are fully Brahman. There's nothing else that we could be. Just like Ramana Maharshi, went, when he encountered people who would doubt this truth, he would say, well, are you aware? They'd say, yes. <laughs> and are you aware that you're aware? Well, of course, yeah. So he said, then Brahman is realized because that is the function of Brahman, awareness of awareness. Brahman has no other function. And the phenomenal world and all these beings are created without any effort by Brahman. They just pop up, you know, around Brahman. Huh? Just like if there's a rock in a stream, or no, a better example, <laughs> waves in the ocean. There are waves in the ocean, and the ocean is water, and the waves are water. So the waves are nothing but ocean water. But when a wave hits the break, huh, when it hits the beach, it dissipates and it's lost, it's gone. But the ocean remains. So this is the relationship between Brahman, the Paramatma, and the Self, the Jivatman. That the Jivatman pops up 
like a wave on the ocean. Spontaneously, automatically, without the ocean doing anything. And then when the wave hits the beach, it dissipates. But Brahman is not affected. The ocean remains the same. So this is the actual understanding. So because beings are made of Brahman, they have the qualities of Brahman, just like jewelry made from gold has the qualities of gold. Then additional qualities are overlaid on that gold. You see, like if I take a lump of gold and make it into a ring, now the form of the ring has been superimposed on the material gold. So in the same way, the form of a human being or other beings is superimposed on Brahman. And then we say, well, this is this other being. But actually it's not because it's the same Brahman. Just a different wave in the ocean. So we call beings like we call waves, huh? even though they're still part of the ocean, never separated from it. But they have a specific name and form. Oh, that's a wave. Huh? Or, oh, that's another person. Or that's an animal or a tree, or whatever. But these are just waves on Brahman. And Brahman remains always the substrate and the material, the source from which all of these other beings are made. So finally, the source of fear is to see difference in Brahman. Like we look at our old God brothers, the dualists, huh? And actually, everybody who's a dualist, whether Christian or Muslim or scientist, <laughs> and they're all ruled by fear. They're afraid of what's going to happen, whether they admit it or not. They don't know what's going to happen at the time of death. That's because they don't know who they are. They have all kinds of theories, sure. I'm a spirit soul, and all the spirit souls are uncreated, uh, being coexistent with Brahman. And so naturally we have a relationship with God, but we can't know that relationship as long as we're covered with matter and, you know, so on and so forth. This is all nonsense. This is all wrong. It's not that the, the ring becomes something else other than gold, just because it's in the shape of a ring. It's still gold. And it will always be gold, even after the ring is broken and melted back into the source of gold or whatever. The waves are still part of the ocean. And even though they dissipate when they hit the shore and break, they're always simply water. And in the same way, the beings are always Brahman. Brahman was there before they appeared. Brahman is there alone when they're existing. And when they disappear, Brahman alone is left. So this consciousness, this uh, view, ajatta view, that the world is unborn, it never was. So how can it be a source of fear? You know, so what if this body disappears? It doesn't make any difference to Brahman. And we are that Brahman. We are that Atman, that self. And to realize that is the perfection of self-realization. Aung Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.